Welcome to Fort Knox. I'm here once again with uh, Supermicro CEO Charles Liang, and we're going to talk about Supermicro, and we're going to talk about the artificial intelligence rush. Um, Charles, as we're speaking, there are some announcements that, that you're making this week. We've also just seen NVIDIA report earnings that blew the street away uh, based on AI chips and the demand for them. And of course, at Supermicro, this is a segment that you focus on very much. Tell me, what is the demand that you're seeing for these advanced computing systems, particularly for AI workloads? Well, thank you. Very good question. Indeed, our demand has been growing kind of crazy. So uh, year over year, last year we grew about 100% in uh, accelerating GPU product. And this year, the growth uh, can be very fast. I hope we can beat the last year, 100% growth, but who knows, let's see. So anyway, we work with NVIDIA very closely since uh, 20 years ago. So we both company working together very closely. We support each other for platform level. And when they grow, for sure, we grow together and we are fully ready to support uh, quick growth quick demand or our AI industry. How much should we think about capacity constraints, uh, whether it's from NVIDIA's side, though they seem to think that they can su supply quite a bit given the way they guided $4 billion above the street, but also the other components that you need to put the whole system together. During the pandemic, we saw match sets issues across the computing landscape. Has all of that cleared up enough where you feel confident that you can meet this demand? Uh, you know, from a pandemic uh, global shortage, we learn a lot. So we prepare lots of uh, safety inventory for our customer demand. However, because the demand has been uh, so strong, so we still cannot ship all the demand for customer. So we are continuing uh, growing our capacity, uh, build a more uh, safety inventory for our customer. One of the advantage is that Supermicro, we design our product based on building block solution. So we can prepare lots of uh, uh, box, lots of subsystem for customer. When customer need, we put a box together and optimize the system for their workload, for their application. So basically we support a much better lead time than our competitor. One of the things I can't figure out is who is the customer at this stage? Um, who, who, and is the demand, uh, like, are they buying because of anticipated demand because of the great interest in AI, AI right now? Are they able to put this equipment directly to use to more efficiently handle workloads that they already had? Do you have hyperscalers who are taking on this equipment? Who is the customer and, and what's the nature of the demand right now? You know, we have a lot of uh, long-term partners. Again, we support uh, AI GPU solution since 20 years ago. So we have lots of uh, existing customers, long-term partners. At the same time, also some new customers for uh, uh, GPU cloud, for all different kind of application, kind of like uh, uh, generative uh, AI application, uh, large language model, uh, lots of new customers as well. Um, so, so what I'm trying to figure out is, is this... Uh, a situation where people are stockpiling at all, or is this all flowing into an existing demand? And should we expect, do you expect your order rates to follow uh, the the curve of AI adoption? Indeed, since uh, 12 months ago, we already foresee the strong demand. So we start preparing uh, since 12 months ago. And now, that's why we have a lot of capacity to fulfill a customer's demand. However, there are lots of shortages from NVIDIA and other suppliers. So uh, we still work with them very closely and try to fulfill as much as our customer demand. What's the geographic breakdown that you see right now in demand? Are, are there particular countries or regions that are moving ahead faster than others or particularly looking for uh, your higher performance equipment more than others? You know, because we are USA company, indeed uh, our headquarters in Silicon Valley since 30 years ago. So most of our customers are in USA. And yes, we try to grow to Europe, try to grow to Asia as well. But at this moment, the most demand 
uh, in USA. And uh, we ha had not enough product to support them. That's why we still focus mainly on USA, but not limited to USA. Talk to me about where this is going technology-wise, where your R&D is focused. I'm hearing a lot now about generative just being the first move and that uh, there's more inferencing workloads coming down the line once uh, the, the generative AI starts getting put to work. Um, is, is that necessitating different architectures, different designs from Supermicro to, uh, to handle those inferencing workloads that are coming in greater scale down the line? Uh, we have a very lucky company. Since I found the Supermicro 30 years ago, we design our product, manufacture, manufacture our product based on building block solution. And because the building block solution are so flexible, that allow us to design product quicker, deliver application workload optimized product to customer quicker. That's why we are able to leverage those. And the good thing is because of the nature of building block solution, so we can convert lots of capacity to support generative AI demand. Uh, but I wonder, well, what I'm asking about is the, the coming inferencing demand. Are there ways that you are right now uh, talking about your roadmap and how you're going to be positioned to handle the next phases of AI as well? Uh, our AI solutions support deep learning, kind of gen generative AI and deep learning, and also edge AI as well for telco, for 5G, you name it. So we support a very broad product line. And again, because of the building block solution nature, so it makes our uh, production, our manufacturing more flexible, more efficient to support uh, customers' specific demand, urgent demand. Okay. Uh Talk to me about Computex and specifically what's new. Uh, what, are the, what are the things that you think uh, industry is going to be most interested in out of your an announcements? And why have you chosen the areas that you've chosen to, uh, to present this time around? Oh, okay, lots of new products. Uh, as why I say, we work with NVIDIA very closely since 20 years ago and Jensen has been my old and good friend for so long. So we work together very closely in leverage design, share platform design experience. So overall, Computex, we have lots of new product announcement with uh, NVIDIA. At the same time, liquid cooling. As you know, now all the CPU, GPU consume much more power. So our state-of-the-art liquid cooling solution uh, will benefit to our customer, save their energy cost up to 30% uh, or even 40%. So we have lots of customers really uh, very passionate to uh, move to uh, deep cooling. And we have a very good uh, product line already uh, with inventory ready to support our demand. Charles, how much of a challenge is that going to be? There, there was for a long time, a lot of pressure on data center companies and certainly on hyperscaler cloud companies to make environmental commitments, these AI workloads, I mean, they run hot a lot of times. They're computing intensive and there's a lot of demand for them all of a sudden. What kind of a challenge for the industry is it uh, to, to make sure that those workloads are handled as efficiently as possible, both for cost reasons and for environmental reasons? You know, it's a big topic, and we are very lucky. Since 18 years ago, we started to focus on uh, green computing. So green computing has been our DNA. So with green computing, we can help customers save, again, up to 30% of the data center energy consumption. So that helps customers save lots of uh, money for sure. At the same time, lots of CT, lots of customers have a power uh, rating limitation. For those customers, I have a limited power with green computing. We can help them save each system, save up to 30% of our power. So that's why they can deploy more machine, more AI platform without power concern. Save money and make our planet greener and more beautiful. So lots of good things to go. Uh, and finally, Charles, where do you see the greatest risk for others in the industry who are competing with you for this business? I mean, is it on that efficiency piece? Um, is it th the fact that you've got these 
longer standing partnerships and maybe you, you feel that you're tied in better to the, the, the design uh, pipeline and uh, the design uh, roadmap uh, of the likes of NVIDIA? Uh, you know, yes, we have a good relationship with NVIDIA for sure, but from our feeding box solution, from our green computing, and from our drug scale, plug and play solution, all of those attract uh, customer. So customer like our solution because we are able to deliver new technologies to market quicker. And we are able to reduce the lead time, product lead time for customer and uh, quick service. Customer buy our uh, drug scale uh, building block solution. They can deploy their system, their drug in few days instead of few months or few weeks. That save them lots of time and also help them save uh, uh, TCO, right? Kind of uh, energy cost. So, I mean, uh, we are getting more and more uh, interesting, good friend, good partner. So how, how does the macroeconomic environment play into that, though? Is it the competitive concerns about getting left behind an AI that's driving it? Or, you know, what, what's going to continue driving uh, customer demand if you think customer demand will continue to grow if the U.S. economy does head into recession in a couple quarters, as some economists expect? For sure, as everyone knows, economic hay win the impact the industry a little bit. So we have some product line also got some impact. But for AI, for rack scale solution, for high performance storage, our demand is just uh, imagine. So uh, we are doing our best to fulfill those demand. Well, and that's why I'm talking to you so much about uh, AI. Charles, I appreciate the time to uh, fill me in on the latest with Supermicro, particularly when it comes to artificial intelligence and uh, the great demand that you're seeing there. Thank you, John, for the opportunity to share our strategy, our position, 